Elizabeth Webb from Houston Harp Music and today I'm going to show you how to change one of the lower gut strings on a harp. I'm changing it on a pedal harp but the same principles will apply if you're changing it on a lever harp. But this is specifically for those large thick strings because the knots are tied differently. If you want to change one of the thinner strings from an upper register, um, find my video on how to do that. So first you need to make sure that you have the correct string. I'm going to be changing a fifth octave B right here. This B, it's very old. It's starting to fray up here where the pedal discs touch it and it's getting a little discolored. So it's definitely time to change it. I'm making sure that I have the correct string, fifth octave B. It's a gut string. So I do have the correct one. That means I'm ready to go. First thing you're going to do is take off your old string. So grab your tuner, make sure you're on the correct, uh, the, the correct um, tuning pin. You don't want to accidentally take off the wrong string. And then you're just going to start loosening it. It may take a while when it's these thick strings. It's a, it takes some muscle to move them. But it is coming. You can really see here now um, just how frayed the end of that string is. So it's definitely time to change it. I'm not going to undo it all the way. At this point, it's so loose. I'm just going to kind of finish it off that way. And I want to end with my tuning pin where the hole is straight up and down. This is going to enable me to easily pull the old string out as well as to insert the new string. So I'll go ahead and pull it down. Very simple. Now I'm going to grab my wire cutters, just generic wire cutters, and I'm going to cut it uh, maybe a foot from the bottom. This is just going to make it easier to pull out. I don't want to pull this goobered up part down through the sound hole. It could scratch things. It's just easier not to. So just take the little piece that's left, shove it back through, pull it out with the other hand, and you're good to go. Here you can see the knot that was tied. It's gonna be basically the same type of knot that we're doing, but this is nice and tight because it's been there for years. The one that we tie is gonna be kind of loose and it's gonna get tight over time from the pressure of the string pulling up. But this is what we're aiming for in the end. All right, I'm gonna take my new string and unwind it being careful not to bend it. If you bend these gut strings, especially the thick ones, you'll get um, this discoloration area. I'll show you with the old one. If I bend it up, now it's this white, uh, it just looks bad and it compromises the string. So try your best not to bend the string any more than necessary while you're inserting it. I tend to look through these and see are there major flaws, um, which end of the string might I want to go through, do I want this part to be here, or do I want this to be at the top. Um, in this case, I'm seeing a couple small flaws on this end, so I'll, I'll go ahead and have this be my top. So take the end that you're going to put down through and feed it through. It's much easier to feed down through than to feed up. So feed it through the sound hole. and pull it oh, a good halfway or more through. Not so much that you're risking the end coming through because then you have to feed it back up, but enough that you have plenty to work with. So now I'm going to tie the knot. This is the trickiest part. And I'm actually gonna show you up close using the end of the old string first, and then we'll do it on this one. So here's, here's the string. I wanna give myself plenty of space. So I'm gonna go, uh, this is maybe four inches or so, and just start bending it. I actually want that white part now. And bend it and bend it. Sometimes I'll actually wrap it around something, a pen or a pencil, if you're having a really hard time getting it to bend. So there I've basically, it's almost like lubricating the string, getting it loosened up and, and malleable and ready to tie your knot. So now I'm gonna tie it. I'm going to, I've got my, my kind of loop there. I'm going to take the end and feed it through. And then I'm going to pull it as tight as I can, basically making a knot. So there's my knot. 
I'm going to take the end and I'm going to feed it back through and I'm going to try to get it to where it's about even. Or I've got like an inch or so on each side so that as this pulls tight, the knot becomes stronger rather than coming undone. So that's the basic idea of what we're doing. Now we're going to do it on our new string. This string is not going to be quite as easy to bend as that one because this is new. That one was old and starting to fall apart. So again, I'm going to do, I mean, you can go as much as six inches. I've got about maybe four inches and I'm just going to start bending it. Grab my pen because that makes it a little bit easier and just wrap it around to get it to start to be willing to move for me. All right. So I've got it started there. Now I'm going to take my end and put it through the hole. All I'm doing is just tying a very basic knot. And I'm going to tighten it as much as I can, which might not be that much. You can see this knot is much bigger than on the other one because this string is much firmer and harder to bend, harder to tie. But I have, I have a knot started. I've got plenty of tail here, so I'm going to stick it through. And I'm sticking it through the exact same way that it's coming out, just like you would on a shoelace. Um, so it's going to go back in the same hole, making a loop here. And now I've got about an inch on each side. It can be less. It could be half an inch on each side. But you don't want like two inches sticking out. If there's too much hanging out, you're more likely to cause buzzes for it to accidentally touch another string. It can cause a problem. But this should be plenty good, all right? So this, this seems pretty steady. It's, it's not going to accidentally come undone while I'm tightening it up. I think it's gonna be good. So at this point, we're gonna pull it on through and we are ready to string up our new string. I'm gonna shove it straight up through the hole and I'm going to make sure it is on the left side of my bridge pin and that the string is coming down through the pedal discs, through the middle, not over to the side or the other side. If you're doing a lever harp, you want to make sure that it's in the correct position in relation to the lever. Now, because this is one of the lower strings, I'm going to actually pull as much as I can and then pull it on down. I want to get this as tight as I can because it's actually going to wrap quite a bit and I don't want it to wrap so much that it goes all the way back to the neck. So I've tightened it. I'm going to just kind of shove it underneath. I'm basically trying to tuck my tail under. So I'm going to shove it under and pull that through. There's my tail. Now it's time to grab your tuning key. Make sure you're on the correct pin. And I'm just going to hold this while I turn it just long enough to get the string to fold over my tail and pin it down. That's what's going to keep it from moving. Once I have it pinned, I don't need to hold the tail anymore. So there it is. It's pinned down. That tail's not going anywhere. My next job, as I continue to turn it up, is to press this a little bit to make sure that it winds inward, not outward. And I do not want it to wind over the part that's already here. I want it to wind to the right of it. So I'm going to press it a little bit. And there we go. It's, it started winding on the correct side. It should be good from here. You may be able to hear some little creaks and groans. That is our knot tightening up and, and getting pulling tighter and becoming more secure down there. It's going to continue to do that for a while. And you're going to need to continue to tune up the string for a while and eventually it will hold. But right now, I'm just going to get it in the ballpark of approximately where I want it to be. So I'm just going to tune it to the string right below it. So I've got a, an, uh, let's see, an A here, and I'm just going to tune it to that A. So it's obviously very low. All right, so I have it tuned to the string below. That means I'm close. Now is when I want to grab my tuner. I use an app on my phone, but you can use whatever tuner you like. And I like to set my phone down on the base of the harp. Again, you can put it wherever you want, on your music stand, um, but I like to have both hands free so I don't want to be holding the tuner. 
All right, so let's see. We're at a G right now. Because this is a B and this is a pedal harp, I need to tune it to an A sharp. There's our A sharp. But every time I pluck it, it's getting lower and lower because the string is still stretching out and the knot is still adjusting. So I'm gonna keep tuning it up. If I come back in 30 seconds, I'm going to need to tune it again. And then a minute after that, I'll need to tune it again. You want to tune it as much as you can. Um, I may come back and tune this 50 times just today alone, and then more over the next few days. The more frequently you tune it, the faster it'll start holding. So tune it as much as you can um, when you have that new string. So now I want to make sure of a couple things. Number one, remember that knot that I said could touch another string and cause buzzing, I want to make sure that that knot is horizontal, not vertical. So if my hand is the sound hole and here's my knot and there's another knot for another string oops, nearby, if they're both horizontal, we're not going to have problems. They're not going to touch each other and they're not going to buzz. If one of them is vertical, it's going to be touching the other and when when you pluck it and it vibrates it can cause slight vibrations and buzzing between the strings so you really want to make sure that all of your knots are uh, horizontal not vertical so that you don't have any buzzing and this is a great time to do that because the string is on but it's not really set yet so I'm going to go down here I'm going to run my finger down that helps me find the correct string when I'm looking underneath. Gives me kind of a search point. And mine actually looks pretty good, but I'm gonna adjust it. I heard it kind of moving as I wiggled it, uh, which helps it settle into place. So we should be good. Let's see how much it's gone down now. It's down to an A. We'll do it back up to an A sharp. And there we go. All right, the only thing left to do is make sure that we have the correct number of windings. If you only have wound around one time, then the string could come undone. It might not hold, pin that tail down well enough. You could have problems. However, if you've wound around four or five times, um, it's not good either because it gets too close to the neck and where then you run out of room later as the string continues to stretch over days, weeks, months, years, um, you'll have to keep tuning it up more and more. So you need that extra space available for more winds as it, as it stretches out. But also, uh, it can put an undue uh, angle on the string as it angles down to the bridge pin, and it could, in extreme cases, actually pull off the bridge pin if it's at too far of an angle because it's wound too far in. So I like it to be two, three, four windings around when I'm, when I'm doing it. Definitely no less than two. I, I aim for about three. This one's pretty good. We're at two, maybe two and a half times around. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to take my pliers, take the flat end, get it as close as I can. Try not to leave any more than you have to and chop that right off. And I can actually use this because this is from the fifth octave. It's nice and thick. I can take these and chop them up into little pieces about maybe an inch and a half long each. And these are going to be very useful for when I replace strings up in the higher octaves. So I can actually make use of this little bit of extra string. Remember to keep tuning up your string over the next few days until it holds. And I hope you enjoy your music.